Welcome to our third panel today uh, with the title of the uh, Resistance and Struggle Against Neoliberal Agenda in Balkans, of course. Uh, this panel is, of course, some kind of continuation of previous uh, debates during the day. Uh, some plan is in first uh, five short statements by our participants to, to articulate some uh, major points about the situation on the left concerning the, uh, the neoliberal uh, process of privatization, austerity measures, and all, all that stuff, but in the perspective, what are the obstacles in the ideological sphere uh, for left to articulate those, uh, those questions in proper sense, uh, especially concerning the, uh, this problem of socialist legacy in terms of uh, rhetorical baggage of this some kind of, uh, some notions uh, had in the public sphere and also about the nationalist question. So we know that, uh, as we said on the first panel, the modes of privatization, neoliberal reforms, uh, all that economic measures are more or less uh, similar or identical in uh, every state with different uh, degrees of intensity, of course. But the specific difference is the uh, ideological field as a, uh, as in some kind of mediator through which these measures were legitimized in the public, in, in the public sphere. So we have here uh, six panelists. Uh, we will start with uh, Ovidia from uh, Romania, and also I will ask the panelists to uh, introduce themselves, uh, their uh, affiliations or organizations, so it will be much better than, than if they are, will do it. So Ovidia, please, and I hope that Zdravko will come uh, soon. Hi, Don. Uh, I'm Ovidio. I come from Romania, and I guess I represent here uh, this journal for kids and um, for children, and <laughs> uh, and also Critic Attack, uh, no, uh, an independent platform that has been formed uh, two years ago, a sort of a continuation of indie media, but uh, uh, focused on uh, explicitly on reclaiming the public sphere uh, as a strategic struggle, ideological struggle. So I'm going to talk very, uh, hopefully, very briefly, five minutes about uh, things, practical things learned from the struggles in Romania, and the idea that uh, we, we have uh, um, in order to articulate the principle of hope, right, amidst all the chaos and destruction and, uh, of everyday lives. And, f um, and I'll touch on uh, things that were, uh, were uh, uh, talked about in the previous panel, nam namely the problem of uh, the continuity and especially of generalization of struggles of anti-capitalist, commons and so on and so forth. So the first thing that uh, um, it's a, both a proposal and a lesson uh, learned from the movements in Romania is that uh, the social movements, NGOs and uh, independent groups um, have to, to, uh, to, to explicitly put forward the ideological struggle for reclaiming the public sphere as an, as an end and as a purpose that, that has to be explicitly followed. Uh, reclaiming the public sphere. We in Eastern Europe have seen in the past 20 years the, uh, the manufacture of uh, new culture industries. We know exactly who the new players, new power players, new industries are. And so it's, uh, uh, I think it's a very important terrain for struggle and an opportunity to, uh, to work and, and break uh, uh, um, monopolies of power and of uh, discursive monopolies. Uh, and this, um, the struggle for the public sphere uh, for us with Critic Attack especially, is also a way to give uh, a hope and to generalize local issues and single, uh, and single issue struggles. Yeah? So we heard in the previous panel the problem of local uh, greens, for instance, that they just don't get interested in, uh, in, in problems of people from some, somewhere else and so on and so forth. If you combine this struggle with an explicit uh, uh, struggle for the public sphere, then all of a sudden the, the local struggle uh, gets a second dimension, a collateral dimension, and uh, there's uh, more to fight for. Uh, secondly, um, it's uh, uh, something that we learned from, my, uh, from the January and February movements in Romania is that, uh, is this, in a little bit, is what we also are trying, to, I think, to do here, to, to situate ourselves in a constitutive moment, a constituency, right? And, um, Particularly in the, from the Romania, the, the, the important thing that uh, uh, came forth from this popular discussions of the popular movement was moving towards uh, 
this fight against austerity, against privatizations, moving towards uh, reclaiming socially owned properties. Uh, so framing also the discussion of commons uh, within already existing constitutional, but also uh, independent practices uh, related to, to socially owned properties. And um, here the energy, uh, the energy uh, sector is, uh, is key uh, uh, for, for, for us, I think. Um, and the, the, the third uh, thing that uh, uh, I think it's important that we learned from, it's, uh, and again, this is said from the point of exit from apathy, you know, how in Eastern Europe uh, activists complain that there's a general apathy and then uh, there's one event and so on and so forth. Well, I think that uh, we have to consider the January, February movements in Romania, a historical moment, uh, and a little bit the, the, uh, the real end of transition in the sense that you have, uh, as uh, Petre showed uh, uh, previously, in more than 60 cities, spontaneous demonstrations, right? It's a moment of uh, upheaval, of popular reclaiming the streets, of uh, remaking of public forums. And so it's, a, it's a really an epistemic and political turn. And the lesson is that it was not the exploitation and austerity that drove people out in the streets, right? No, people have took it up for 20 years in Eastern Europe, right? Austerity, which is now again, you know, uh, West Europeans are discovering it, that has been the name of the game for Eastern Europe since uh, December 1989. And so what actually brought people out in the streets, what was the, the main reason of mobilization was when uh, the neoliberal reforms attacked reproductive economy, when uh, particularly the health system was, uh, uh, they tried to privatize the emergency sector, and uh, the discussion went straight uh, through, uh, through that towards subsistence economy and reproductive economy. That's where, when uh, uh, the shit hit the fan, right? So basically that's when people got out. Uh, and so I would propose to consider this uh, a principle of, uh, of uh, struggle to, that will undo this uh, uh, imaginary of, uh, of the market that has dominated the, you know, the political and economical imaginaries of people's Western and Eastern Europe after 89, namely that there's market economy and then underneath there's informal markets. No, horizontalize it. There's market economy and then there's reproduction and subsistence economy. And neoliberal reforms, actually what they do is they enclose and they enlarge indirectly reproduction economy. All the austerity measures and all the cuts from the social state and everything uh, were supported by uh, women, wives, and immigrants, and pensioners. In other words, by the reproductive economy. So that reproductive economy itself has to be then uh, uh, a reason for struggle and uh, an explicit reason for struggle. That's the second uh, uh, lesson from the movements from Romania. Also linking reproductive economy and subsistence economy uh, to other issues uh, has the same effect as the fight for the public sphere, namely, uh, ensuring uh, generalization of struggles and continuity of struggles. You have local issues that die out after a couple of uh, uh, months or after one year, even if they are successful. Well, if you link uh, the fight for against the privatization of a mine with the subsistence economies built around that area, within that framework, the general, general framework of reproduction economy, then you collateral issues come up and then there's a different constituency being formed. Um, and third uh, lesson that we learned, and it's a proposal for the Balkan Social Forum, is indeed the, an, an epistemic turn. Um, it, it's, it's the realization that this moment of hope, the, the, this uh, great upheaval from January, February in Romania, uh, produced this uh, moment of, uh, uh, of um, realization that we have to go beyond internal critique of domination and actually articulating alternatives, and that the starting point for this is indeed uh, coming back to the Fanonian principle, I talk from my skin, from where I am, and uh, that basically what we have to do, and that's a great moment of opportunity, a great, great moment of opportunity in this chaos for Eastern Europe, is to uh, reverse this Eurocentric production of subjectivities that uh, was the name of the game after 89, to define, redefine Europe, and by Europe I mean the global Europe, from Southeast Europe, because uh, Western Europe also redefined the identity, the identity of European, what it means to be European in Europe, through the passivity and willingness of Eastern Europe to 
accept recolonization and so on and so forth. So now, when Europe and the EU are in crisis and they are looking for different definitions of themselves and of different imaginaries, Eastern Europe has an incredible opportunity to, if it was the vanguard of neoliberal reforms in the past 20 years, it, right now it, this means also that on, in the top of the most difficult moment of the crisis, because we don't know what is going to happen next year, maybe it's going to be the worst, it's a moment of opportunity to take this uh, chance and redefine, look at it globally from uh, the position of uh, Eastern Europe in solidarity with the, social, uh, with the global south and rethink about alliances this way and about the way of thinking Europe. That was it. Uh, thank you, Ovidia, especially for this Eastern European uh, enthusiasm, I always like that. And also I think that uh, Ovidia uh, touched maybe the crucial point, maybe that it was some kind of missing link in previous discussions between fight for the public good, public sector and commerce with uh, this kind of, uh, this most people terms like usual kind of uh, class struggle that social reproduction of labor power is uh, linked to the fight at the produ production side, that there is no, uh, that there is a really obvious social continuation between two, uh, two struggles so we don't have to somehow to, to discuss it uh, in a separate way. Uh, so I will now uh, pass the mic to our friend Zdravko from uh, Macedonia. Uh, thank you. Uh, it is uh, hard for me to speak uh, on this subject uh, in, in this moment because um, for the left in Macedonia it is a difficult period. It is a period uh, of, of uh, crisis. But uh, I think that uh, still... Uh, Lessons can be learned not only from positive experience, but also from the crisis. Uh, some mistakes not to be made. Um, uh, so um, I will speak uh, of uh, three elements of uh, experience which uh, should be taught and should uh, be uh, keep in mind. Uh, the, uh, the left in Macedonia was mainly active uh, quite uh, uh, for the last five, five years, quite good on the field of anti-militarism, anti-nationalism, and social justice. Uh, last year, uh, mainly it was uh, there was several uh, small organizations which uh, took the, the the activities by themselves. Uh, last year, uh, there was uh, one interesting uh, development, development of events. Uh, last year in June, uh, first uh, massive uh, social protest uh, broke up in Macedonia. It was connected with a murder of uh, a young youngster by a police policeman, and uh, there was a big outrage in Macedonia connected with this. Um, uh, Immediately, the social movement uh, reacted, and uh, it was it it has been shown that uh, that uh, the previous uh, working on organizing was very important uh, for this movement to start and grow. Uh, there is uh, there were uh, three more initiatives like this. There were that were more, uh, more uh, broad than uh, the organizations. Uh, the other uh, important initiative is uh, from this year. It is called uh, Together for Peace. And it is, uh, it is uh, uh, connected, uh, it is created by the Macedonian and Albanian uh, activists against nationalism because uh, in this period we, had, uh, we have a lot of problems on national basis between Macedonians and Albanians. Uh, the, uh, again, the social activities, uh, activists were in the forefront in organizing these uh, initiatives. But a uh, very important uh, issue here is that uh, in trying to broaden the specter of the uh, people who support these acti acti uh, ac initiatives, uh, the leftist uh, uh, activists, 
started to uh, mild their, uh, their uh, agendas. So mainly in these two uh, initiatives, you have uh, a lot of leftist activists uh, very active in the, that, that initiatives, but the agenda was more or less uh, liberal. And um, uh, why, why was that? Uh, it was because um, the leftists fear, feared that if they start to, to uh, implement leftist ideas, then people will not uh, join the initiatives. But I think uh, uh, it was a quite a serious mistake, especially because uh, some of the leftist activists were in the forefront, in the first line of these uh, protests, uh, but, um, and they, uh, they be become known in the public. But uh, all, of our, all, all of us leftists didn't work on, uh, on getting people from these initiatives with progressive ideas to our organizations. So we uh, entered the initiatives, make them work, but uh, the results were very weak. So my point is how to fight ne neoliberalism and nationalism, uh, all uh, what is we are against, is that uh, to be careful on this moment. Uh, yes, you must uh, sometimes work on broader agenda, but uh, to keep in mind that not to, uh, to disappear in the agenda of, the, of this initiative. Uh, the second one is uh, connected with the issue what is uh, systemat syst uh, pro-systematic working and what is anti-systematic working. For example, most of uh, you here are against capitalism and I am also against capitalism, but uh, you ma must frame the activities in the time and place when, where you are working. Um, so this issue in Macedonia is like uh, uh, the organization has started to work too much on systematic activities and they have forgotten anti-systematic uh, struggle against capitalism. But uh, uh, unfortunately, the issue is much, much more complicated than in the first, uh, uh, first line. For example, why we, should, uh, why we should, if we are against capitalism, work on some uh, labor issues, on some small uh, labor rights? That is the issue. Uh, in Macedonia, recently, a few uh, months ago, finally, uh, labor uh, law for minimum wage was it was enacted. Uh, we were f the last in the Balkans to have this law. And um, it was a compromise. It could be uh, criticized uh, uh, to some level, but uh, some comrades started to criticize it from this position, that uh, 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 minimum wage is pro-capitalistic because it is helping uh, workers to be integrated in the system. And we, as a leftist and anti-capitalist, should not support this uh, minimum wage. But uh, this is uh, only, uh, but it's, this is on theoretical level, on practical level. Uh, we are facing with uh, uh, big exploitation of Macedonian worker. And in that situation, if you start to t tell uh, workers that uh, minimum wage is a very bad idea, then uh, you will lose uh, uh, pu public that uh, is very important to you to, uh, to be heard for your arguments. Uh, uh, so this uh, issue is very important because um, there are system systemic activities with anti-systemic potential, which means when you talk to people that uh, minimum wage is an important issue, then you create the class conscience of the people. In the Republic of Macedonia, workers don't have class conscience, only ethnic conscience. To listen to you and to your arguments 
in the future that anti-systematic, anti-capitalist work is important. They must uh, listen to you when you are working on systemic uh, issues. And uh, opposite is uh, possible also. You can have anti-systematic uh, work with systemic consequences. For example, you can kill a capitalist. If you kill a capitalist, then everybody will turn against the left. So these uh, systemic and anti-systemic elements are uh, more, uh, more complex than in the first uh, line of uh, speech. The third, and I will very, uh, be very short about this, not to take uh, too much uh, time, it is about the, the leftist activists, their uh, possibility of over self-appreciation of themselves and the building of socialism. The building of socialism is a complex thing that uh, no uh, person, how much uh, ca capable, can do by himself. But unfortunately, in, uh, in the leftist movement in Macedonia, we have a lot of people who, uh, has, who appreciate a lot and over-appreciate themselves a lot. And that can be a problem. How can a leftist uh, over-appreciate uh, himself when his goal is socialism, which cannot build, be built by himself? This is a very uh, dangerous issue and important for everyone and for every movement to understand that uh, uh, over-appreciation of uh, a person is a very, uh, uh, very uh, big mistake for a movement. And steps should be taken to, uh, to minimize this uh, aspect. Uh, in order to build a stronger uh, leftist movement. A movement which is made by masses and not by persons. And persons should work uh, in building a mass uh, movement of uh, socialists and not to overemphasize how big socialist he is. Thank you. Uh. Thank you very much, Zdravko. This was a proper dialectical and historical analysis of the Macedonian left, everything included. So I will now pass the mic to Vuk Bacanovic from Unitary Organization for Socialism and Democracy in Sarajevo. He will talk about the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hello to everybody. Uh, uh, the colleague from, from Macedonia, the comrade from Macedonia, uh, mentioned, mentioned something very important and that is uh, lack of class conscience and uh, domination of national conscience. Uh, uh, I, must, I must say that, that uh, we cannot uh, lose this very important uh, question from, from our side, uh, especially in our battle, uh, Southern, that means in Bosnia, in Kosovo, in Serbia, in Macedonia, and in other countries in Southeastern Euro Europe, with uh, this special problem, but uh, uh, I will in, in this in this uh, in this short uh, speech I will try to to explain uh, which problems has a small uh, small leftist tendency in Bosnia, which uh, problems in in fighting uh, neoliberalism. Well, in the first place, uh, it is important. Uh, to reflect on our socialist past, to explain to people what kind of socialist we had and how that modification of, of, of uh, socialism called Titoism didn't solve, uh, in fact, the, the national problems, but closed the, uh, the nations under the rule of different uh, na national bureaucracies who, in process of reinstallation of capitalism, mainly became the new national oligarchies or national elites, or the same people who, who started the, the, the processes of uh, neoliberalization, uh, reinstalling nationalism as the main ideologies. Uh, that is the, the problem. Uh, the second problem is explaining the war. 
uh, because in Bosnia, war is still the first question and interpreting of the war, which kind of war that was, uh, who, has, who, who has the biggest guilt for the war, uh, who, in which way to reckon, in which way to make some kind of culture of memories and new identities uh, uh, on the basis uh, of the remembering what war is. And uh, it is very important then for the left tendency to explain that uh, the war, in fact, uh, uh, was a process of reinstallation of capitalism in, 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 in Bosnia and Herzegovina because the people who got rich in the war uh, making a large and, and, and uh, uh, large profits on uh, on the trading weapons and trading by the food, uh, cigarettes and other uh, and, and and other commodities are in fact now the part of the ruling elite, ruling class, the new bourgeoisie. In fact, it is explained that the left Marxist tendency explained to people that in fact the the new bourgeoisie in Bosnia was born was born from the war it was it was somehow the process of of its uh, of its birth uh, then uh, of course it is a problem to 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 always to s again and, and again say uh, that uh, during the war there was a process of uh, uh, a process that before the war we had uh, uh, something which was called in Bosnia and ex-Yugoslavia, in uh, Bosnia, a property of society. Uh, during the war, there was a uh, 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 process of uh, 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 of uh, making that uh, uh, making that property first property of the state. Uh, and preparing it for privatization after the war, when the large privatizations came and the factories were uh, sold for uh, half of the euro, or uh, the the now in Bosnia, as as a consequence of that, we have a, a, a forty three percent of unemployed people uh, in, of course, all all the all, all the nations. Then it is again in and again important to to speak about that uh, it is all uh, it is also important uh, to explain the role of international banking sector in 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 bosnia and herzegovina uh, after the war, uh, almost all banking sector uh, uh, was bought by the German and, and, and the Austrian banks, especially Raiffeisen and Sparkasse. And in fact, uh, all, uh, all the money of the public, of, of still publicly owned uh, uh, estates and the publicly uh, and, um, and the state is held in debt banks. And uh, those banks are in fact speculating with, with, with our money and giving uh, the, the, the points of interest until uh, uh, they go up to even to the, sometimes to the 14%, from 8 to the 14% to the same people of Bosnia who, who in fact, uh, the, the, the whole, um, whole demand in, in, in Bosnia is uh, on, the, on the infusion of, of, of this international bank. Uh, giving uh, uh, credits on such uh, points of interest to the to the people of Bosnia that is uh, that is very uh, uh, th that is the subject that uh, uh, the firstly our organization uh, start to explain publicly then it is also uh, uh, very important to to make a strategy of uh, fighting against false false left liberal opposition NGO civil sector opposition Position uh, that is uh, 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 th that fights against uh, nationalism with certain declarations, but uh, promising that EU, EU and uh, Euro-Atlantic integrations are solutions from the old problems. Although being the pro being uh, in fact not the solution of the problems, but uh, making things even worse because. Uh, Bosnia is under uh, under the custody of the of the international community and uh, and uh, under custody of the special uh, of, of the special uh, special uh, bureaucrat high, the highest bureaucrat whole high representative of of European Union that's that's also the the problem and the whole these processes uh, uh, all the processes uh, happened uh, under the rule 
of the international community and who uh, the same international community uh, who was uh, who was looking for years of, of the Bosnian war and the slaughtering and, and destruction of Bosnian society uh, making this uh, this uh, horror of the state that we have with uh, with horrible bureaucracy and uh, horrible state apparatus and also still stately owned companies uh, that are ruled by the different families, bureaucratic uh, fr fr from the different political parties, practically privatizing them. They, on the paper, they are state property, or on the fact and reality, they are property of few families who, who, are, uh, who are then uh, blackmailing the people who are employed in those companies to vote for them uh, because otherwise they would lose their jobs. And it is the, the, the Bosnia, let us say, it's, it's so, such a complex. Uh, is such a complex system of of uh, of firstly uh, nationalism and chauvinism and uh, that left patriotism as the ruling ideologies and then clientelism and uh, then uh, the, the the situation in which uh, 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 in which uh, primordial Accumulation is 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 uh, still is still happening, uh, accumulating and accumulating the the the, the capital and after after the the after the destruction of of the of the system that we had before. Uh, that would be li like uh, some some subject that, that that the new left tendencies in Bosnia I think uh, have to have to worry in the first place. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, the, the 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 situation is more complicated as our work it is, and uh, we could we could have a thousand <laughs> thousand conferences speaking uh, for for the each uh, of each and little detail of uh, what is what is in fact going on. Thank you. Um. Uh, thank you, Vuk. Uh, now we'll have Milos. As in the previous, on the previous panel, small uh, note. We all, we all, uh, again, we have a small technical issue with the Serbian guy. So, for all those non-Yugoslav-speaking uh, people, please take the translation mechanisms in front of the uh, room because uh, Milos will speak in uh, our language. In our language. So yeah, yeah. Maybe we should wait for half a minute if anyone. Wants to hear. Maybe if anyone wants. Yeah. Maybe you should try, but well. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, hello, my name is Miloš. Uh, I'm from Serbia, uh, and as you, as Marco uh, said, uh, my English is not very good, so I'll speak in my native language, uh, our language. Ja sam bukvalno shvatio napomenu da dam kratak uvod. I zato sam, da ne bih pravio digresije i time probleme prevodiocima, rešio da zapišem što kraće i preciznije, ali nisam stigao to da prevedem na engleski, te stoga ovako. Mada se ovaj panel zove Resistance and Mobilization Against Neoliberal Agenda, u Srbiji su antineoliberalne borbe relativno niskog intenziteta, I zato bih ovu priliku pre iskoristio za jedan uvodni generalni opis društvene i političke situacije koja u Srbiji ima neke specifičnosti koje dodatno ometaju artikulaciju leve političke alternative. Privatizacija u Srbiji počela je naravno još 90. godina u vreme vladevine Slobodana Miloševića. Ipak, u komplikovanom kontekstu ratnih godina, privatizacija je prolazila kroz razne up and down faze, stopirana je, revidirana, ponovno pokretana, zavisno od okolnosti u kojima se autoritarni režim nalazio. Specifičnost se sastojala u tome što je SFR ostavio u nasledđe društvenu svojinu, koja je od 90-ih delom privatizovana, delom prebačena u državnu. Pun zamah neoliberalizam dobija nakon 2000. godine, to jest nakon rušenja Miloševićevog režima. Sve opcije desnog i levog centra koje su od tada do danas bile na vlasti, sprovodile su neoliberalnu politiku, to jest ekonomske mere koje dovode bivše socijalističke zemlje u status evropskih periferije. 
koji bi to mogli biti specifični ideološki i politički faktori koji smetaju promociji levice, odnosno leve političke alternative u Srbiji. Ja bih izdvojio sledeće. Pod jedan, idejna konfuzija u pogledu pojma levica. Za to je u velikoj meri kriv period Miloševićeve vladeline. Naime, Milošević se predstavljao kao neka vrsta levičara, a i neoliberalna opozicija koja se borila protiv njega, ga je mu je pomagala u tome, odnosno pomagala je to izbrci, obtužujući ga da je reč o poslednjem socijalističkom diktaturu. Situacija se možda malo promenila poslednjih godina u kontekstu novog buđenja globalne levice u kontekstu ekonomske krize, ali nama koji radimo na reafirmaciji levih ideja u Srbiji, mi i dalje osjećamo tragu ove ideološke zbrke u velikoj meri. Pod dva, još uvek relativno aktuelna priča o tzv. nacionalnom pitanju, od Bosne do Kosova, koja se po potrebi izvoči kao džoker koji skreće socijalno nezadovoljstvo u pogrešnu smeru. James and Vuk and some other comrades told you something about that. Tri, da, da, sorry, sorry. Po tri i dalje je dominantan javni diskurs o neminovnosti evroatlanskih integracija koje podrazumevaju vezivanje za neoliberalni brisao. Dodatni problem je lažna alternativa u nacionalističkom zagovaranju okretanja Rusiji. I to smo već čuli, Srbija, Kosovo, Evropska unija, Rusija i tako dalje. U Srbiji su nedavno održani izbori i Srbija je jedna od redkih zemalja u kojima u vreme ekonomske krize nije došlo do smene vlasti, makar na kozmetičkom nivou. Naravno, u suštini razlike među ponuđenim političkim opcijama i nema. Iza svih partija stoji kompradorska buržazija i jasna i direktna veza ili sa Briselom, Vašingtonom ili sa Moskvom. Opet je pobedila sumljiva, navodno, socijaldemokratska opcija, nekakav levi centar, dok je desni centar ostao u opoziciji. E sad, zašto ovo pominjem i zašto se mislim da ima nečega interesantnog primetiti u vezi sa poslednjim izborima, a što bi mogao i na tom najformalnijem nivou političkog mainstreama da ukaže da prostor za jednu novu levicu ipak možda postoji. Tri momenta. Po prvi put u izbornoj kampanji su dominirale socijalne teme, a ne nacionalne. Naravno, njima su se bavile buržovske partije, jer one za sada jedine i učestvuju na izborima. Međutim, ova činjenica je jedan interesantan indikator. Po dva, na izbore je izašlo jedva nešto preko 50%. Možemo možda pretpostaviti da narod ipak nije toliko glup kao što se nekada tvrdi i da jasno prepoznaje da opozicija, dakle taj desni centar, nije nikakva istinska alternativa i da ne nudi ništa drugačije od aktualnog režima. Poenta je dakle da je dosadašnji režim pobedio, ali je tu, i to bi bio treći moment, interesantna jedna stvar koja može biti pomalo kontraverzna. Naime, u postizbornoj kombinatorici presudnu ulogu je imala ozoglašena socijalistička partija Srbije, ili barem nekada ozoglašena, sada uvažena članica takozvane socijalističke internacionale, koja je najviše od svih gurala jednu posebno levo intoniranu, navodno, levo intoniranu kampanju. Obećavano je svašta od hapšenja kapitalista koji ne poštuju elementarno zakon o radu, preko besplatnog obrazovanja, školstva, 
do 13. penzija i tako dalje. Činjenica da je koalicija o kojoj je reč jedina duplirala broj glasova, možda isto može da govori da je narod senzibilisan za ovakve teme, što naravno ne znači da ja ili bilo ko misli da bi ta navodna koalicija išta novo ponudila, reč je o demagogiji, oni su već bili na vlasti, imali su prilike da nešto urade, naravno da nisu ništa i nemamo razloga da verujemo da su postali nekakvi istinski levičari daleko od toga. Da se za kraj vratim na formalnu temu panela, konkretne antineoliberalne mobilizacije u Srbiji se poslednjih godina mogu svesti na tri momenta. Prvi bi bio ovaj o kojem je Vladimir već pričao na prethodnom panelu, dakle, pod jedan odbrana javnog sektora, štrajkovi prosvetara, lekara, protesti i referendumske peticije protiv zakona o privatizaciji javnokomunalnih preduzeća, zakona o javno-privatnim partnerstvima i tako dalje, koji su sve skupa po prvi put okupili inače razjedinjene sindikalne, glavne sindikalne centrale u Srbiji. Pod dva, studenski pokret protiv komercijalizacije i privatizacije obrazovanja i pod tri inicijative radništva u kulturi protiv komercijalizacije kulture i protiv komodifikacije javnih prostora. Drugi set bi bile nezavisne radničke borbe za očuvanje radnih mesta i za afirmaciju određenih formi sitnog malog akcionarstva ili čak samoupravljanja, koje su između ostalog rezultirale i osnivanjem jedne lokalne radničke partije, koja se zove ravnopravnost iz grada Zrenjanina, ali o tome će, verujem, više pričati Milenko i Bane, koji su sa nama sutra. Pod tri su specifične, treći set bi činila je specifične kampanje protiv nus produkata kapitalističkog režima, kao što su, na primer, kampanja pravo na protest, kampanja protiv državne represije, o tome može više reći ovde takođe prisutna grupa Mark 21, dalje akcije protiv radikalnih desničarskih grupa koji u Srbiji prave velike probleme praktičnom organizovanju levice na nekom grassroots nivou, dalje mobilizacije protiv raseljavanja siromašnih, pre svega Roma, a u kontekstu urbanih revitalizacija i džentrifikacije i tako dalje, kampanje protiv diskriminacije LGBT populacije i akcije usmerene na suštinsku afirmaciju rodne jednakosti. Sve te akcije su često način da male antikapitalističke grupe koje u Srbiji postoje animiraju javnost stvaranjem širih frontova i pokušaju objasniti sve ove probleme ne iz dominantne liberalne ideologije, nego na osnovu klasne analize. I ovde bih se već približio kraju. Tu dolazimo do činjenice da godinama unazad su postojali i postoje razne male antikapitalističke grupe i inicijative, uglavnom marksističke i anarhističke, koje prate u svakom smislu šta se dešava u Evropi i svetu i koje su spremne da sa drugim progresivnim demokratskim inicijativama se organizuju na osnovama koje bi bile minimalno antineoliberalne i, na primer, antifašističke. Da zaključim, Levica ne postoji u Srbiji u institucionalnom smislu. Svi ovi nabrojani levi impulsi mogu da se shvate kao prve iskre potencijalne nove levice u Srbiji. Te postojeće inicijative treba 
treba povezivati, raditi na političkom obrazovanju, pronalaziti dodirne tačke organizovane radničke i studenske borbe sa svim drugim progresivnim i socijalnim pokretima. Treba se fokusirati na konkretne probleme na koje nadam se da ćemo konkretnije još pričati. I u suštini na temelju svega toga artikulisati jednu novu politiku koja bi bila jasno leva, dakle antikapitalistička. Za to nam između ostalog treba i jača i konkretnija veza sa Balkanom, sa svima nama, vama, sa prvim komšijama, jer je to neminovno i zato mi je drago što smo svi ovde zajedno i nadam se da ćemo skupa doći do konkretizacije zaključaka i do jedne ideje šta da se radi. Hvala. Thank you, Miloš. After the analysis of the situation in Serbia, I think the best way to continue is to see what's going on in Kosovo. So please, Agon Hamza, the activist from Kosovo. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to talk about the current uh, political and ideological predicament in uh, Kosovo as problems uh, about which uh, the left should think and uh, tackle. Uh, the paradigm by which the country is ruled or governed is stability. Stability, as a rule, uh, means uh, stabilizing the existing state of things. That is, uh, stability is the very mechanism through which the neoliberal intervention is rendered possible. Or, to put it, in, to put it differently, uh, stability as a, a ruling paradigm serves for the reproduction of the political and economic condition of uh, domination. Its primary function is to manage the crisis, that is, stabilizing the political domination and economic uh, exploitation. This is the main political and ideological paradigm from 1999 onwards. Uh, by stabilizing the crisis, the so-called international community opened up the space for neoliberal adjustments with new forms of uh, imperial interventions. How does it work? The premise of the international administration in Kosovo uh, is that the Albanian-Serbian issue is uh, ethnical. The best example of this can be found on the infamous billboard uh, issued a few years ago by K4, NATO uh, forces in uh, Kosovo, in which a dog and a cat were presented, uh, hugging each other, followed by, uh, by a message. If they can do it, so can you. <laughs> uh, uh, this is the truth of their uh, multi-ethnic uh, uh, propaganda, which is a sort of ideological uh, uh, supplement of the uh, neo uh, neo-imperial interventions in the, uh, in the country. So in their view, like we barbarians, cat and dog cannot live together, we need the, the master, of course, the international European one to make our coexistence uh, 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 possible. Uh, against this uh, so-called culturalization or ethnicization of the uh, uh, Albanian-Serbian uh, issue, I think that we should more, more and more insist on, the, on its political, uh, uh, political character or nature, perhaps in the, uh, in the tradition of uh, Dimitri Tutsovic and, uh, uh, and so on. The second point, and I will be very, very brief, I'll try to finish as soon as I can. Uh, uh, the usual way of reproaching the uh, opposition of privatization and uh, other uh, neoliberal measures uh, undertaken by international administration, as well as by our government, is that of uh, Yugoslav bashing. Uh, a few years, last year, the, uh, the workers of uh, PTK, po uh, post of uh, uh, Kosovo, managed to stop the privatization of the, uh, of the enterprise. And then that night in the evening, you get a US ambassador on TV uh, saying that uh, whoever opposes privatization is stuck in, his, in the Yugoslav socialist backward mentality. And you get this on, on, on public, uh, on public uh, television. Uh, on the other hand, every, everything is either being privatized or given, with, uh, given to concession as the airport, international airport of, uh, uh, of uh, Pristina. And of course, as a result, unemployment and therefore poverty are increasing rapidly. Uh, currently, the, uh, the unemployment is in uh, Kosovo is around 47 or 48, uh, uh, 48 uh, percent whereas the uh, extreme poverty is 
uh, somewhere around 22% if I'm, if I'm not uh, uh, mistaken. Uh, another interesting fact is that the money taken from the privatization and that of the pension fund are deposited in the foreign banks or invested in the Western stock, uh, uh, stock markets. Due to, as the representative of ICO, that is International Civilian Office uh, uh, in Kosovo, said that due to the inability of Kosovo people or government to invest them properly. But guess what happened? Financial crisis, most of them were, were, were basically uh, lost in the uh, stock market investments. Another thing is that people of Kosovo are immature, so they tell us. Uh, we need international, uh, which, by which they mean European supervision, because otherwise the country would be a complete failure. EU, EU mission in, in uh, Kosovo, known as EULEX, in fact that's one of the EU missions in the country, is responsible for, for fighting, as I put it, corruption and establishing the rule of uh, law. The way they choose to do that uh, is, for instance, through distributing around 10,000 t-shirts uh, with various messages written on it against, against uh, uh, corruption, or with TV ads and billboards all around the, the, the country. However, uh, the failure of EULEX is not due to the non-cooperation of primitive people of Kosovo uh, with the mission itself, as I like to put it, but uh, I think its failure is structurally inescapable. It couldn't be, uh, it couldn't be uh, otherwise. In short, uh, the history of the country is written according to the neoliberal uh, uh, text textbooks. And then, what is to be done against this predicament? To put it very schematically, one should insist on the idea of going beyond, uh, uh, beyond independence. That is to say, in a somewhat simplified way, that the whole series of structural changes should be done in all possible uh, social and political and economic uh, practices, from democratizing the imperial democracy. One important fact, the president of Kosovo came out from a meeting with of three, the leaders of three main parties in Kosovo with, uh, with the US ambassador. So he just wrote a name in a piece of paper and it was voted the next day in the, in the, in the parliament. Uh, to, from uh, democratizing the imperial uh, democracy to dissolving uh, uh, neoliberal economic experiments. So, as for uh, moments or movements of resistance, it is worth mentioning the students' resistance against the Bologna uh, uh, process reform and uh, tuition fees, post uh, workers against privatization of the enterprise, strike at some uh, mines and other factories such as Ferronicoli or uh, uh, Schartzem and so on. Okay, I'll, I'll finish here, perhaps we can go on, on, the, on, the, on the discussion. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Igor. Now, at the end of this panel of presentations, we will hear some remarks from uh, Susan Akunac, activist here from Zagreb. Please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry, but I skip over the context of uh, privatization and transformation uh, transition to democracy in Croatia because it was, for me, being sociologist as well, was quite unbearable that I have five minutes to speak about the context of last 20 years and also the, the space for resistance to neoliberal capitalism, so I focused basically on this other part. And if there is need to go back to that, maybe we'll do that in discussion. So uh, for me, coming from um, basically NGO, civil society sector, I was activist for 15 years, mainly in feminist organizations. Uh, 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 I see this uh, whole process coming from 2009, the first big moment uh, seeing uh, in Croatia as a resistance against neoliberal capitalism for me was basically the mainly arise from the student movements. Their contribution based on, based on direct democratic activities and principles signif significantly slowed down the process of commodification of knowledge and its co consequences for the society. On the other side, student movements refreshed the actual political vacuum within the Croatian society by introducing new and different methods and approaches. Uh, for me, that was direct democracy as faceless resistance and university occupations. These principles served as effective methods to fight, to defend the material resources for reproduction, but it also served to introduce new self-determining political practices that changed and interrupted the logic of the, what we usually call politics. It was without question the most important emancipatory movement or event in the 
I would like to say maybe last 10 years in the region. The content and substance of the movement encourage people to support and join the student fight. Uh, the student movements were the first organized way to explicitly oppose the capital, trying to show and demonstrate the interdependence between the so-called relative autonomy of economy and politics that is based on the principles of classes and that it's very self-managed. It is important to say that direct democracy as a principle of self-government is not mainly facing the national state or political forces and political power within the nation state. It is moreover focused on the development of its own strengths and capacities. I do believe that's the process and that's what is the most important what's happening after the 2009. It is not only about governing the spheres out of politics. The focus is to influence the everyday life covering all its concrete and direct fights and mechanisms that are oftentimes not falling into the sphere of the so-called official politics. This is very important and I will try to uh, explain deeper on some, some examples. The idea of direct democracy, a self-governmental idea, is not to take over the control over the state and the economy. The main idea is to redefine the state, its institutions, the economy, and currently existing pra practices and their interdependencies. The current problem and challenges between capitalism and national states cannot be reflected only from the perspective of the distribution of power or distribution of governments or governors meaning corrupted and irreversible appointed politicians or greedy capitalists and lack, lack of participation. The big challenge and problem is the way of producing power and the relations and conditions of power, basically the, the question of uh, transformation of the power relations. So the student movements itself and other movements that were initialized and supported by the student movements within the last three years influenced the development on different groups, initiatives, and organizations that are now part of the direct democratic resistance against neoliberal capitalism. I will just mention some of that. I do believe that it's important to mention that in 2010, it was established uh, Akademska Solidarnost as a trade union. Uh, there is also some organizations like Base for Workers Initiatives and Democratization, Center for Workers Studies, uh, Feminist Front, Collective for Education and Media, uh, M31 Global Anti-Capitalist Movement, and some others. Of course, the plenum of uh, university, philosophy University of Zagreb is still there and functioning. Uh, there are some other organizations that are all, also worthy to mention as are very important support, supporters and allies throughout these uh, different actions, direct actions throughout these years, like um, Young Anti-Fascist Zagreb, uh, Network of Anarcho-Syndicalists in Croatia, and so on. But uh, for me, the, the second point which is important to mention in the resistance to neoliberal capitalism, it's basically the direct actions like, for example, solidarity with workers from the textile factory Kamensko, the workers from Yadran Kamen, the farmers in strike, the established cooperation with some unions, for example, Petrochemia or RIS, or all of that is showing an existing continuous resistance against neoliberal capitalism that is increasing every day. Uh, what is important with uh, this solidarity with workers of Kamensko or Yadran Kamen, I do believe that was basically uh, also one process of trying to introduce these new concepts of uh, direct de democracy within the factories. Because I do agree with the colleagues that there is, the worker class is not really conscious of their class position. So this was really like the first experiment which was with Kamensko very hard and there is some, I do believe, lessons learned. And Yadran Kamen is still ongoing process, so we don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully this uh, factory will be occupied and uh, try to be self-governing by the workers. One also important part of, part of the fight is the introduction of direct democracy in the sphere of economy. In our region, there is still a great distance and res restraint for self-government of workers based on recent experience of the Yugoslav model and the failure of the Yugoslav model, and the following war and transformation process of the societies. But I do believe that worker self-government can function and we do have to learn from, from the mistakes done in the past. And I, be, I will just briefly refer to Michael Lebovich's really profound analysis of the self-government governance, worker self-governance in Yugoslavia. And I do believe that there is some real good points in comparison to also what's going on right now in Venezuela. Uh, we learned throughout these years that in Croatia there is some factories also who are working uh, in a self-governing work, workers' way. It's crush, 
for me, that was new information that I didn't know, and also petrochemia, that's now well known. So there is a hope that uh, this kind of struggles and solidarities and learning should be widened. Uh, also, like uh, colleague Kamarad Mate this morning said, that in Croatia uh, there is a huge change, at least I, I can see it, uh, about the struggles and resistance against neoliberal capitalism is happening in the media. So there is really like uh, several uh, important media uh, spaces which are following uh, uh, direct actions and improvements or developments of different groups and initiatives. And I mentioned just some of them, it's Halter, Zarez, uh, forum, which is a political weekly, and we do have even one uh, interesting uh, public television uh, TV show called Fifth Day. So there is, like Mate said this morning, uh, maybe easier way to uh, get to the wider public. Uh, I do believe that media is an important pillar for uh, the construction of this hegemonic uh, neoliberal paradigm, which is still omnipresent. Uh, and I do believe that uh, ma uh, mainstream media is still not uh, following that trend. I will stop now, so maybe we will have some more questions afterwards. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Susanna, for your contribution. Now we have uh, 30 minutes for uh, the questions, comments, and uh, discussions. I don't think I have to summarize what our participants have said because there are they were all very clear and precise. And after uh, half an hour, uh, our comrade from Bel Belgrade, Milan Rakita, will do this difficult, impossible task that, was, that were Tomislav and Stipe doing the last panels. He will put up some conclusions on our projection screen. So please, comments, questions for, for our participants. And, uh, can someone, uh, okay, just put it. So maybe we can take a few questions but then I'll answer everything, please. I just wanted to make two, two brief points about uh, what was said here before. First one regarding the case of Kosovo. I think it's kind of a fascinating case because Kosovo today is something between a U.S. overseas territory and European neo colony And what's interesting is that in Kosovo at the same time you have this domination, external domination, but also external competition because there is some kind of some form of tacit competition between the EU and US to impose certain things. So, for example, there have been a long kind of going issue between US and the EU as regards the issue of this uh, integrated border management. So which kind of system they have to, to apply. So unfortunately, not much is discussed about this, but I think it's very important in the context of the approach of external powers and imperial powers toward this kind of impoverished territories. The second point I wanted to make is about the kind of the, the state of the left in the region. With all due respect to the individuals who are here and other individuals who struggle every day in their respective countries, I think the situation is quite hopeless in the sense that the left is very weak. And in my understanding, one of the reasons why the left is so weak today in the region is that they are kind of somehow uh, located in their own small territories, which are kind of uh, the, the, the present borders of the states. I think the, the only kind of way forward is to join, to join efforts and struggle because what we see today in the region in terms of the neoliberal economic policies, we have cer certain form of, uh, of uh, nested neo-colonialism because you have companies from Austria who buy companies in Slovenia and Croatia, then you have companies in Slovenia and Croatia who go and buy companies in Serbia. And then this is how the whole circles function. So it's hard to fight this economic policies without a joint efforts because the capital today in the region is concentrated in the hands of very few people who are based kind of mostly in the northern part of former Yugoslavia or in what is known as, as uh, Central Europe. So I think it's very important to, to move beyond and to see what are the concrete ways people can join their efforts in their everyday struggles. Thank you. Thank you. Some other comments, please. If I can add, uh, when it comes to um, self-governance within the uh, companies, as the uh, lady has mentioned, there is a significant difference between um, the self-governance of the companies during Tito time and what is happening now in South America, Argentina and stuff like that. Because, and 
th this is the difference. Uh, during Tita time, first of all, the workers did not own the company. They did not have any uh, ownership uh, responsibility during Tito's time. They, they, there was no reason for them uh, to fear the failure because they would be subsidized or whatever. Uh, plus, um, the employment <clears throat> of surplus workers was actually a way to maintain social order. So in order not to have unemployed people, not to have homeless people, the solution was to put them in the factories and, you know, just have them there. Um, that's why we had like two times, three times more workers in the companies that, than it was actually required. That, that's the significant difference between the Tito model and the model that is now going on in South uh, America. And I didn't hear anybody mentioning that, but it, it's, it's a very important difference, yeah. Just pass the mic to Susan here for the immediate answer. Uh, you're right, but uh, I refer to Michael Lebovich, this analysis. Basically, Venezuela is also now having uh, quite troubles with self-governing of a uh, workers' factory. It's a different example than Argentina. But uh, what I said, we have to learn from the mistakes from the past. Uh, it's not so simple. I mean, this analysis that you provide, it's not really like the fact of reality. It was different stages through self-governing uh, within the factories. It was the truth that workers was, were not owning the factories. But uh, basically, they were, at the time, I do believe 60s, uh, they were really like deciding about the surplus of the factory. I do believe more than 30%. Then it was the uh, next stage where they have to decide what to do with the smaller factories which are not functioning at, at the market. So bigger companies were taking care of the smaller, smaller. And then the next stage was that they were owning, factories were owning the banks who were low, low, uh, having the loans for the smaller factories. So there was the indebting by the bigger factories. So there was so many different issues. But basically, the uh, socialistic uh, system, Yugoslavian so socialistic system did not solve these troubles. And they are going to happen again. So basically, how to redistribute at the level of the society all these small uh, self-governing factories and the communities, I do believe it's still open question. So it's not just, but I, there is some improvements that throughout the socialistic time, Tito time, uh, self-governing passed through and we should try to learn something from it. Uh, anyone else, please? Uh, Katrin Samarin. There's Mike. Yes, <clears throat> first of all, I, I want to strongly support the general formulation which has been given in the beginning that to uh, rethink and rebuild which is a long pro i don't know what uh, time it will take but rebuild europe from the south perspective from the south and eastern uh, peripheral perspective and that is a, a key issue which uh, i do believe is also not only a, a middle term and long term but immediate issue because of the series and greek uh, uh, situation today and uh, that uh, I do believe uh, that uh, we have uh, to organize our effort uh, around that issue because the program uh, Syriza is, is putting forward is around uh, public sector, the defense of public sector, the defense of the statute of human being, the question of ecological issues and democratic issue and uh, uh, the the, the um, uh, dominant powers and treaties uh, are completely contradictory to this. So the issue is either to, to re restructure, to reestablish completely with uh, mobilization and, and another kind of articulation, or uh, the, the Greek people, Syrians and so on, will be uh, uh, pushed out of that existing uh, Europe, of course. And that is the, the, the situation. Um, we, we have, of course, uh, not to defend the existing Europe, but to build something else around Syriza. That's the first, the first point. The second point, and the last, uh, I wanted to say that uh, uh, I am also involved in, in France in uh, an association called uh, Association for uh, Self-Management, Association pour l'autogestion, which uh, purpose is not French and uh, only uh, based on... Uh, uh, limited uh, uh, experience and or uh, uh, answers to how to function. 
It wants to uh, collectivize, mutualize uh, all experience which exists in the world. Um, we have contact, of course, with uh, Latin American, uh, Argentinian uh, actors uh, uh, in front uh, in the question of the crisis, also in Asia and so on. And uh, we would like very much uh, that uh, all experience, concrete experience of resistance to the crisis and to the dominant criteria in the crisis, uh, not at all in the context of what was the self-management system in Yugoslavia, but in the system of, of crisis and of envir capitalist environment, but all those experience uh, that we should uh, have information about them and help them to... to uh, to create and recreate also um, means of uh, 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 alternative, alternative uh, reconstruction of solidarity. So please take contact and send all the information on all that kind of uh, restructuring. Thank you, Catherine. Any other comments? James? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, maybe I'll now uh, pass, pass the word all, all, uh, again to our um, participants. Uh, maybe I can some kind of uh, problem in, in terms of mobilization and agitation in these organizational uh, questions of the left that somehow popped out uh, during your uh, inter interventions was the way how to, what are the, the best ways, uh, the best uh, tactics to, to introduce new kind of political education through the in the, in, in the public sphere. Uh, Susan was talking about this connection with the media. You were talking about uh, public sphere. Uh, Vuk and some other participants detected crucial ideological uh, traps concerning this false opposition between uh, nationalism and EU, EU uh, integration. And it seems to me that the crucial aspect at this stage of the struggle is to introduce some new explanatory models uh, from the left somehow to, to manage to gain uh, some kind of social visibility and social uh, relevance of this uh, uh, kind, uh, kind of models, somehow to break up this, uh, uh, this false division be between uh, uh, liberal, uh, liberal or neoliberal e economic uh, explanations that, that serve as, as, a, as a, legitimation, a legitimation for the austerity measures and all the uh, all the reforms, and on the other side, uh, complete, uh, completely very dangerous uh, nationalist uh, disorientation. Uh, so I will ask you, or of, co of course you can add some other things uh, or reflect on some other things that you heard in this uh, previous uh, other intervention. So I will ask you, there was the, some, uh, some experiences or some models that you can suggest in that, uh, that direction. I want to start with you, uh, Ovidia, like in the previous. So, new explanatory models as a, as a, as a story, a success stories of. Uh, no, how to how to introduce, introduce the new uh, the explanatory models of understanding how the capitalism works. What are the uh, what are the basis for this ideological confusion? How to introduce this explanation of social reality from the left in the public sphere uh, to put some other you know uh, epistemological. Uh, uh, agenda. Very shortly, for, for from I guess my or our perspective, then uh, it's very important not to project our own words to fight for the introduction of words like capitalism, neoliberalism, yeah, and so on in the, the public sphere. The but at the same time, to to work with uh, uh, the words that are actually used on the ground, and if uh, it's fight against austerity, then so be it. But uh, work around the frames in which those uh, words are put. And um, I guess the, the main uh, uh, insertion point would be this, uh, this at least from this perspective, and I will be really short, is this uh, uh, dismantling right now uh, connection of, of, a, of a general myth of the post-communist transition, namely the identification between democracy and capitalism, right? And as we all know it, there has never been uh, such a thing in the history of capitalism, right? A half millennium, uh, n 
capitalism was never identified with democracy. It was identified with empires, with sometimes with innovation, uh, but a lot with guns and violence and expropriation and slavery. And so it's important to, to, to formulate this dismantling between the link uh, of the link between capitalism and democracy in our own terms, because the capitalist elites at this moment, they are also formulating it. They are also realizing that the story about capitalism equally being the natural environment for democracy does not, uh, is not bought anymore uh, by the population. So there's already capitalist concepts that rationalize this uh, dismantling of the link between capitalism and democracy. And I'll give you three examples. It's the neoliberal conception of the commons used by World Bank and none other by, but uh, Jeffrey Sachs uh, as a way of uh, taking chunks out of an economy and justifying non, well, non-privatizing, but you know, a production of value, which is basically a preservation of uh, privileges. Then the second example is Renanian capitalism. Uh, what goes on, the, the great model, of course, is Germany, but there's new projects of uh, understanding that, oh, well, there's some sectors of economy that cannot be really privatized, but the idea is to enforce power relations and uh, the power of uh, elites over those sectors. And the third example is what uh, uh, seemingly comes through the program as far as it was announced from uh, Monsieur Hollande, uh, namely a return to developmentalism and uh, the uh, idea of uh, growth seen through developmentalism. And all of these are breaking a little bit this link between capitalism and democracy, but they are returning. They are not anti-systemic. Uh, uh, and I think for, for us, it's, it's important to, to emphasize the anti-systemic nature of the change that we are facing. Okay, uh, Zrok, maybe you can say something about, uh, especially concerning this problem that you detected on the Macedonian left, but that, that's not that's the only problem of the Macedonian left. This kind of uh, false contradiction between systemic analysis and the abandonment of the uh, these smaller struggles. Yes, um, problem, yeah. Uh, uh, I have uh, been concentrated on uh, the reaction uh, which can have the activists during the activism. And I think that these uh, traps are very important. For example, uh, should, uh, how we should uh, re react in uh, uh, global, more global uh, initiatives. Then uh, what should we do with ourselves? Should we... Uh, do something which is systemic or anti-systemic, and uh, how uh, we should look at ourselves as social activists. I cannot, and uh, these uh, issues, I think that uh, are quite important. I can add on the struggle against nationalism. In principle, you can find on their field to fight nationalism, on the national issue, or you can change the subject and uh, promote the social agenda. In this, uh, uh, through my experience, I have uh, uh, come to the conclusion that both of uh, these ways are important, to fight nationalism uh, with anti-nationalism, but also to try to change the attention of the public to social issues. Um, um, one uh, more uh, thing that I have, uh, I uh, want to make is that uh, people uh, don't. Uh, uh, why why people don't uh, start to be active? Why workers don't fight? Um, this is uh, uh, probably in the other countries are uh, especially about the, the subject about the workers is that uh, they are uh, living in fear to, to lose their job. And one important uh, point that I want to make here is that, uh, for example, uh, the former regime was, uh, former regimes in the whole uh, uh, Eastern Bloc was uh, uh, said to be uh, uh, regimes of uh, fear, the totalitarian regimes. But uh, if uh, nowadays in uh, free democracies. You have a lot of uh, uh, people who live in fear to lose their jobs and so on. Then in this uh, dimension, 
the differences between the former regimes and now is not so big. Uh, one important, uh, uh, this one I want to make uh, also a point, uh, how to struggle is to make analysis. Uh, analysis can be uh, judged from the start that they are, they, they, they are not connected with their reality. Nobody will uh, uh, read them. But uh, uh, our experience is different. Um, newspapers uh, and journalists start to uh, take statements from activists uh, on social issues because uh, we have the arguments. And uh, when we have access to the media, we can promote our positions. So uh, this uh, uh, work on uh, statistical data, on, the, on the, uh, how is uh, really the situation, and finding the real uh, data is, ve sorry, is very important, in my opinion. Thank you. Please, Vuk, can you uh, add something to this uh, question, especially from the situation in media in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and you have your own personal experience in that context concerning this, as you like to call it, the petit bourgeois ideology of the yes. ruling class? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the problem is, and uh, well, this is also personal experience. Um, I'm working as a journalist for five years. Uh, I'm also a historian, but uh, my job was also uh, journalistic in, 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 in Bosnia. And the uh, problem is always uh, when you write in the terms of uh, revolutionary left, when you, uh, write, uh, the, when you write a materialist analysis through your text analy and analysis, you, you will always uh, come to that uh, uh, sentiment that that is that is something old or that is something that is passed away and it doesn't exist anymore and the other on the other side there are no arguments <coughs> but just some kind of, of um, let us say um, a cafe talk you know that's the, the the problem of the intellectual elite in Bosnia especially the political commentar comment commentators and what is the worst, even the editors of the main magazines and newspaper, is that uh, everything uh, um, what is scientific, uh, they just go to different cafe and different and listen uh, different uh, 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 very smart, very very smart people talking nonsense on the tables, and then they are making digest of that, and uh, that then they are making. Uh, their their analysis, text, comment, uh, comments from that, which is purely, most of them are purely nonsense. And uh, then they will, I, I don't know, they, they will just uh, proclaim you to be Stalinist or, or something like that, ju just because uh, analyzing uh, things differently than they are, uh, and the mentioning terms such as the uh, working class or bourgeoisie because they think, the, okay, the, some, somebody will say, we live in a classless society, working class doesn't exist, and then you have to explain the, 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 the basis uh, fr from the very beginning, what does it mean and why it is, it is not like that. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the worst is that, as the Marco said, the, the, um, the petty bourgeois sentiment, which is in, in at least in Bosnia merged with this uh, NGO and uh, left liberal uh, false agenda. Uh, well, it, it, it is very funny. The most funny is uh, when their people proclaim themselves to be anti-nationalist, and when they start to 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 write the worst uh, the worst patriotic nonsense in their in their own analysis, and when they re reveal themselves as the worst nationalists, then those nationalists. Uh, who, who they are accused to be nationalists. And that is uh, a paradox of, of Bosnia media scene and the political uh, thinking. And, and now uh, what we have in the media, it is a total disaster of left liberals. They are in panic and they don't know what to do because crisis came. And uh, it, uh, it was, um, it was a, a real uh, demanti of all the ideology policy. Uh, now they are proved to be wrong, and they don't they don't know what to do. So they, they try to imitate some of the um, of the left uh, of the left terminology of the left. Now now that is the beginning 
of something new, but uh, they are just making themselves more and more ridiculous and uh, giving this uh, ethno nationalists a new a new chance for a success for example now we have in bosnia at least in federation a social democratic social democratic government that proved to be the most ridiculous and most incapable government of doing anything for example the the, the last statement of the uh, of the Minister uh, of the Foreign Affairs of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Zlatko Lagumja, who is also president of Social Democratic Party, is that uh, he is uh, Luke Skywalker and uh, his opponents are Empire and Darth Vader, and he is asking the help of God to, to help him to govern such a complicated country. So can you imagine now, it, 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 now it, 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 it became really political circus in, Bos in Bosnia. So from, from all the problems I, I numbered, now can you imagine when you have a, such a silly political opponents and they are governing in, 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 in such a brutal and, and despotic way. So th that's, that's a little bit about media in Bosnia. But the, the, the strategy, how to fight, I would say so. Uh, um, it would be to, uh, to find a specific language to explain uh, the things to the masses. Sometimes uh, some critics are right that if you immediately say bourgeoisie, uh, some people, because they, 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 are not, uh, they are not into it, and then the, the explanation is needed. Sometimes it's better without explanation, how, how to explain how the things are going in, in, in politics and, and what is really happening behind, behind the, all the, the universalistic stories. Uh, and uh, the, the, the main thing is that, okay, our fight our also starts in language, but we also have to think in which language to speak and which language to, to impose uh, 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 what are the, the terms that are right to, to the, so that we can impose our, our, our agenda and, and our policy. Thank you. Thank you. That's some uh, remarks, final brief remarks you want to add to your... Okay, very, very short. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, I uh, have uh, to, to, to add, uh, uh, but... Uh, uh, but but uh, I think uh, the problem uh, we we mentioned on the first panel uh, problem of nationalism uh, 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 is a very big problem uh, not in a sense of some uh, uh, liberal hysteria uh, but uh, in practical uh, practical sense that. Uh, uh, all of us understand that uh, nationalism is connected with capitalism. It is, and all relations between them. But uh, uh, that uh, basic theoretical uh, knowledge uh, don't uh, help us uh, uh, too much uh, when we have a, a practical problem uh, to 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 explain uh, people. Uh, uh, some things uh, that, that uh, crucial, and uh, I think that is very important to 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 one more time now or tomorrow. Uh, 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 we 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 st stand uh, on on that issue because how how for us here, I mean, uh, uh, Serbia and Bosnia and uh, Kosovo and. Uh, Albania, Macedonia uh, have uh, that specific problem, uh, uh, and uh, I'm not sure uh, how much uh, uh, left in uh, Croatia and uh, in Slovenia, and I'm not sure Romania, Bulgaria uh, understand that uh, specific uh, uh, problem in uh, organizing uh, some left alternatives. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's very simple when uh, when you when you criticize uh, 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 Euro, uh, Euro, Euro, uh, Euro integration uh, in Serbia, uh, liberals uh, accused uh, you uh, that you are, uh, like Agon said, uh, uh, I know U.S. Uh, U.S. Ambassador. Uh, yeah, if you are against privatization, you are you support. Uh, 
uh, totalitarian past. And uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if you, uh, okay, I'll stop here. Only, only one to, to yes. one more time. Okay, because I see that you're putting this distinction between situation in those countries that in Croatia and Slovenia, of course, it's, it's because for the one hand, uh, during the 90s, the Croatia was almost completely ethnically clean. So there is no such, you know, this problem was uh, uh, solved in, in a very brutal uh, brutal way. So it isn't so intense as the, in, in Serbia and, uh, and in the other countries that you mentioned. And I'm going to... Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about two forthcoming struggles in, uh, in Kosovo, which is the first one is... Uh, May I call it political, the negotiations between uh, Kosovo and Serbia uh, with regard to the northern part of Mitrovica, known as uh, uh, northern part of Kosovo. Uh, well, apparently what we're going to end up is having another Republika Srpska in the, uh, in the country. And uh, uh, basically, in, again, in the name of uh, multi-ethnic coexistence of communities in uh, uh, Kosovo, in Kosovo uh, we're going to have further uh, partition of, uh, of the country. Uh, Another, well, if, that, if it won't be an official uh, partition that part uh, joining uh, uh, Serbia with getting rec recognition from, uh, from Serbia with that, and, and this, this is one of the, there are two options apparently uh, being discussed now. Uh, these are the two options that are being discussed. Uh, another thing is the privatization of the big, uh, which I think will be the last round of privatization, uh, the big, uh, uh, socially uh, owned or public uh, owned uh, enterprises. They're gonna give another try uh, in the summer with, uh, with uh, PTK and then you have uh, Trepcha Mine and some other, uh, other big enterprises. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the opposition to both uh, uh, privatization and uh, uh, Northern Mitrovica is it comes from either conservative uh, political uh, positions or neoliberal uh, positions. Uh, or, sorry, li liberal position with regard to the northern, uh, northern part of Kosovo, and you have conservatives uh, opposing, or uh, this uh, new nationalist party opposing the privatization because they said it's a denationalization of our uh, uh, wealth and, and, and so on and so on. Uh, so, in this regard, the, on, the, uh, the biggest problem in that country is uh, uh, the fact that there is no uh, big or strong uh, leftist uh, political, uh, you call, whatever you want to call it, a party or movement or, uh, and so on. And in this, again, here relies the problem with, uh, with uh, the Vendosia, which I think we know uh, we know about them, like they started as a proper polit uh, leftist uh, uh, political movement. Uh, a couple of years ago, they got interpolated by the uh, 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 nationalist ideology. Now they are in the parliament. They have 12 seats. Uh, well, in this uh, analysis, like in the next elections, I think they should be happy if they can uh, maintain those, uh, uh, that percentage. Uh, so this was the, the great, the big loss for that country. The, uh, Interpolation of uh, Vedendosia into a uh, uh, right-wing conservative or uh, a nationalist uh, nationalist party. Okay, I think that's. Uh... Thank you, now, Susan. Please, your last remark before Milan's conclusion. If I do understand well, uh, the question, it was about widening the space for um, uh, radical left ideologies and how to widen it. And uh, uh, which, 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 rhetoric, which rhetoric to use for the specific situation because of the specific ideological configuration, of, you know, all these implications that you were mentioning uh, when you were quoting uh, Kapovic's intervention from... From this morning. Yeah, yeah obviously Croatia has different context. That's, that's obvious. Uh, only what I can think right now about is that there is um, another very important pillar of um, perpetuation of ideologies, and that's education system. And basically, right now, I do believe that there is some changes within the educational system. They call it citizen education, and it's just uh, happening right now to be introduced after 20 years of NGO fight for that. And I do believe that, that there is a space to introduce these concepts that we were talking here. I mean, radical left concepts, especially about self-governing, and try to introduce this concept from the elementary school to high school and higher education. So we learn uh, from the 
I mean from the six, seven years old kids, how to uh, make their own decisions, being solder to each other, take responsibility to uh, basically put this action uh, to be real, and how to co connect that with the local communities. I do believe that's the way to go. And uh, okay, fight is in front of us. Right now it's happening. Uh, for example, in this discursive kind of uh, uh, the deb debates, uh, we propose direct democracy and then they somehow it's perceived from the people, I mean from the government and NGOs, that it's better to call that Izravna Demokracija, although I don't understand and I don't know how to translate Izravna in English. Because so, direct is in English. Direct, direct is in the English. same, I mean that's the same word, so you can call it Izravna, it sounds better. And of course it's going to be very hard because throughout the education, even in this citizen education right now, there is just a liberal concept and it's of course op open market. So there is nothing about uh, different alternatives there and how the government and how the state, which is governed by the Social Democratic Party, I mean we forget to mention that, is going to react, uh, we really don't know, but it's going to be, basically the main question here was, is direct democracy and uh, uh, introduction of these concepts can be, uh, can be in parallel with introduction of uh, electional, electoral democracy. Basically, that, that it's still there as a huge point. We have huge debate. And basically, for the time being, we concluded that it's even better to put it as a parallel system and try to, to introduce these concepts in, uh, throughout the school system than to skip it over because we do believe it's not like uh, that it can go parallel. Basically, these two uh, models are excluding each other. So we'll see how it's going as a process, but I do believe it's worth a fight. Uh, thank you, Susan. Please pass the mic to Milan. You're right. So Milan, we make the conclusions. It's really difficult stuff because maybe he will be the best one today. Yes. Before I proceed, I just have to make a to give you a, a, a short information that there won't be any any projection on the silver screen. You know, considering these things, you know, like we used to do today. So. Uh, it is a rather hard yeah, task to, to, to like summarize, to sum up, to come up like with a summary of all three or like especially this l last one uh, conversation or panel. So uh, uh, please have some understanding like for uh, like reading out all of these things, but that's the easiest way like for me and as well for us like to follow and to summarize what has been said in the meantime here. So all the debate remarks and the final conclusions ensuing from them are meant to serve primarily as a means to design a concrete common ground for the future political cooperation in the region of the Balkans, but in a more comprehensive perspective also to bring it more closer to the ongoing struggles of the European left political organizations and across the globe as well. So far, most of the issues and major points of the debate at the different panels have been revolving more or less around the same topics, which certainly should be further debated in detail, thus making the possibility to collectively discuss the past and the present situation, as well as the future state of affairs in the region of the Balkans, so that we could be able to reach a certain level of consensually made conclusions incorporated into the Balkan Forum's final document. Okay, of course, as I as I already said, uh, uh, I've been called a, <laughs> a specially designated person. It, it's my favorite, like coin word, uh, this festival. So I need your approval of my rather insufficient, if not like um, subjective, uh, point of view over the things. Uh, and now. Really, please let me try to summarize as briefly as possible like the final conclusions of this panel debate. Point one, uh, what seems to be one of the major obstacles to the development of a more interconnected uh, left-oriented political space within the region of the Balkans nowadays is a rather a complex set of the existing extremely negative social, political and economic conditions which are more or less similar in each country in question. In the same time, the very fact that a geocultural region of the Balkans inevitably belongs to the capitalist periphery, inasmuch as the countries of Portugal, Spain, Greece, or the ones in Latin America, uh, this does not nevertheless prevent us from seeing the distinctive economic and political conditions in each Balkan countries. We've been talking about it. So, uh, 
Yeah, maybe I could omit this and pass on to this point two. Uh, point two should be this, the following thing. The question of consensus versus dissension on the issues of EU joining, i.e. the leftist organization's political attitude towards the neo-colonial politics and the neoliberal economic policies that have led to the ever-increasing pauperization and growing class inequalities of the great majority of the people in those countries being exploited in all imaginable miscellaneous forms. Point three, arising from what's, what's been said here, there is the problem of the proper political articulation of the Balkans left, both on organizational and conceptual or epistemological level. There have been plenty of insufficient efforts made by the leftist organizations uh, at involving the politicized social categories in the political process in order for the Balkans left to be able to form the entirely new political basis for the future development of the anti-systemic movements and organizations through the collective long-term action which eventually end up into a massive social, socialist or social movement in opposition to the capitalist system. Therefore, any attempt to formulate strategic goals and tactical means of the common struggles against capitalism and for socialism and communism in EU periphery requires continuity of thorough theoretical analysis of the existing socioeconomic conditions in each of these countries and in the region as a whole, but it also must be considered in a relation to the actual neoliberal economic policies and neocolonial political agendas of the core capitalist countries, meaning EU, Great Britain, USA, and their political, economic, and military allies. An ongoing crisis of the Eurozone is by no means one of the perfect example of this. We've been discussing it at one of the previous uh, uh, forums. Point four, going back to the not so distant past, Closely related to this issue is the question of how to rethink and reevaluate the historical legacy of emancipatory revolutionary political project of Social Federal Republic of Yugoslavia on the one hand and so-called actually existing socialism in Central European state. Uh, in order, of course, for the newly emerging leftist organizations, groups and social movements to be able to make a conceptual rupture with the hegemony of anti-socialist, anti-communist, i.e. the discourses in the European capitalist periphery which, has, which have helped uh, counter-revolutionary nationalist regimes and comprador bourgeoisies to grab the power in each of those countries 20-something years ago. Point five. What is... Uh -huh. This is the question. What is the attitude of all the fragmented organizations, initiatives, uh, and trade unions on the Balkans left towards the most urgent issues which has been discussed in detail the last five days in terms of their strategical political goals, both within short-term and long-term perspective? It was one of the questions raised up here. Should it be done either through the existing system institutions or quite contrary outside of them? And what would be an appropriate forms of the future political mobilization in this respect? When trying to give the answer to these urgent questions, to conceptualize and to envisage a more systematic approach to the future course of action in the region of the Balkans, we should not omit the need for the concrete analysis of the current situation in the region of Southeastern Europe. For instance, Croatia is about to join the EU, but the political, geostrategic and economic situation as we've seen it here in, this, in the rest of the Western Balkans is still extremely complex and fragile, which will of course in turn affect the, the ground. Point seven, can we also point out to the major weaknesses of radical left's potential to change its view over the things at this historical sequence in the Balkans and worldwide as well. In other words, do we have a proper analytical perspective over the most important processes and issues we are faced with, which will be able to both conceptually and practically fight the prevailing capitalist discourse in all of its disguised forms, such as this so-called national question uh, on the Balkans, just to name a few of the problems yeah, we're facing with. 
and then I'm coming to the conclusion at the end. Should we therefore get rid of all the confusing terms, concepts, and ideological waves of illusion that were being imposed as a buzzword borrowed from the EU cultural political foundations, bureaucrats, vulgata, such as is the so-called transition or like multi-layered, miscellaneous, hybrid identities, overlapping boundaries, things like that, in favor of devising a set of proper analytical categories more suitable for naming the things as they are <laughs> in reality and not the way they appear to be uh, while we act as the subjects of ideology and not knowing exactly what is at stake here but which will quite contrary pave the way for the possibility of the real understanding of the basic conditions which determinate the political and economic situation we are stuck in. Uh, all of this is meant to devise the strategic means for making a conceptual break with the prevailing conceptual categories to actively intervene within the field of the present hegemonic ideology of capitalism and to subsequently make the real break up with the capitalist hegemony as such. Uh, well, I don't know if I was successful at trying to <laughs> summarize all that has been said, but, you know, more or less. Thank you. The best one today, but that, I think that's because you have prepared yourself before. Just a speech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the end of this, uh, this last panel today. Before we finish, Igor has something to say in the name of the organ organizers. Thank you very much for this uh, very intensive first day of, of discussions. And I want to, to, to congratulate the speakers and many, many partic participants. Uh, basically in the audience uh, uh, and also to people who did all these conclusions. The idea is that we continue tomorrow uh, and uh, there will be two more panels and eventually there will be the final panel. Stretchko and I will bring all these conclusions, separate conclusions uh, together into hopefully relatively coherent uh, uh, text that we'll present to you and then open up a debate so that we can come back to the most pressing issues that being detected, I think, quite successfully uh, during the first day and tomorrow. So we'll start tomorrow at 10. And now, of course, let's congratulate ourselves after 10 hours of work. Came in here. And you can go to listen, Michael Hartman.